yes, I will be wearing my dress again for most of this vlog. It's really cold. It's been really icy and frosty this week, like minus seven I think we got to yesterday. It's a little warmer today, but it's cozy, you know? Hello, and welcome back to a new vlog. So I thought I'd film a vlog this month, i try and do them once a month, but this is just gonna be a day in the life. And like last time, it is just gonna be like a usual boring typical day for me, but hopefully it'll be interesting. I'm gonna show you some art and stuff like I normally do. I have started the daily art challenge again, so I will talk a little bit about that. I also just got some orders through the post, but we are in the new office, so I'm happy to start a vlog here for the first time. Um, the other wall's very blank at the moment, so I probably have this as most of my backdrop. But um, it's a later start for me. But it's a later start for me today. I've just taken Mitch to work, come home. So it's time for some tea and breakfast. And then once I've eaten, I will show you what the postman has just bought me. Okay, so I've had my breakfast, I'm just gonna drink my cup of tea, and as you can see, Mitch isn't here, so I've got the office to myself, which is why I like to vlog, just because I can just chat freely and not worry about if he's on a call or in a meeting. So I had two packages arrive today, one boring, one exciting, but I also had one exciting one yesterday, so I want to share that with you as well. So this was a gift from my friend Hannah, Hannah Flanagan. She's an amazing illustrator and I will link her down below, all her socials, so she's on Instagram. She also has a YouTube channel and it's really lovely, she does lovely vlogs and she's just posted her Folktale Week process as well. And she has the most lovely Irish accent. This is her name and there's her details. But um, she very kindly sent me some prints and stickers. We are actually going to do an art swap, so I'm going to send her some prints and stuff. But there's so much going on with Royal Mail at the moment, so many problems with international postage that we can't actually send anything. So when they do open up postage labels again, I'll be able to send Hannah something and reopen up orders to my international orders on my Etsy shop because that's all had to be stopped. So I'm just doing um, UK orders at the moment, but it's absolutely wild after all the um, issues that they had before Christmas and now this, so it's not great. But luckily we're still receiving posts, so <laughs> I'll start off with some postcards. These are, I think this one is probably one of my favourite that she's done. Like, just look at that lovely texture. I'm not sure which way up it's meant to be, but I think with this it doesn't actually matter. And this is on like really glossy stock, and it's really thick, so you can really see all the vivid colours. Um, I really love this one. And then we've got some landscapes as well, and Hannah's colours are just amazing. This one's really neon in real life, I'm not sure if it's going to show up. And then this one, which I think is really lovely, full vibes. And again, the colours have come out really nicely. So, I also got some larger prints, so Hannah was kind enough to send some A4 ones. I love this waterfall one, the texture comes across really, really nicely. And hopefully you can see that there. But like I said, I will link her down below if you want to check her out. And then this landscape as well, with this little house in the middle. She always does trees really nicely in little buildings as well. And some little stickers as well, so I got this strawberry one and this little chicken one. They are going to look really cute in my journal, so I'm looking forward to adding those in there. So thank you Hannah for sending those, I really appreciate you. And I love seeing your artwork and I'm excited to frame some and put them up in the house. So the next two packages that I got, I'm going to start with the boring one. And I know if it's boring then why am I showing you, but... Oh, a free pen! How exciting! 
um, I do think it's important to share. So last August when I bought my printer, this is the moment that I was dreading when my printer said I had low ink. Um, because ink costs are ridiculous and Canon charges a fortune for ink but to me it was sort of part of the process like of doing home printing obviously you have to pay for ink and when I was looking I couldn't find any non-brand Canon inks um, but when I was recently looking the other day I did find some so I really wanted to share this because one of the things and I don't know if it's a myth but it's something that I believed is that if you buy non-branded inks then it will void your warranty. And so when I got this brand new printer, I was like, okay, I'm gonna just use Canon inks. I don't wanna risk anything if it goes wrong. This is an expensive printer and I don't want anything to go wrong with it or if it does go wrong, I'll be able to fix it. And they also say that Canon will give like the highest quality of print with ink and stuff. But in my previous printers before, obviously I just, I have my little printer, which I use for like black and white and document printing. And I just used cheap ink for that. But for this one, I didn't realise that um, there were compatible inks. I thought there was something in the printer or like in the hardware that would stop you from using compatible inks, like they would know. And so I just presumed that there wasn't any when I was looking. But when I was on Cartridge Save, so I looked at Cartridge World, Cartridge Save, cartridgesave.co.uk had some compatible ink. And it was like the only set for this printer, apart from obviously Canon own brand. And they said that it's actually not true that it voids your warranty. So there's like a big thing on their site that under, I think, I presume it's like UK law. So if you are abroad, then you might have to look into this. But for us, they can't do that. They can't void your warranty because of non-branded ink. But what else they say is that they will cover the warranty anyway if they if Canon do refuse it. So to me, that's like the best of both worlds because it's a lot cheaper to buy this non-branded ink compared to Canon and they cover my warranty anyway. And it just really reassured me that it would be okay. It's very boring. I mean, it's just printer ink, but I do think that was quite interesting um, that I learned about the warranty thing and that there is cheaper ink options out there. And I haven't tested it yet, so I don't actually know if the Canon ink is better, but I'm willing to try it out for this time. And if you are interested, then I can let you know how it goes. I'm not going to put them in today because I'm hoping I can still squeeze a little bit more out of the ink cartridges currently in the printer, but at least I've got some ready for when it does go completely out. And they gave me a free pen, so that's fun. But onto the more exciting package. This is from an Etsy shop I've shopped on before. This is some stationery bits. So obviously I'm really into journaling and I do daily journal. In the mornings, I've got a really good routine this year, starting off well. I'm doing 30 days of yoga and I'm planning on continuing that. Currently on day 19 and I do my yoga and then I sit on the sofa and do some morning pages. Just like an A4 page, so not many, but it just kind of starts me on the right foot. And then in the evening, I journal in my Hobonichi. So this is my daily journal where I basically write what happened that day. And I don't wanna show you too much of this one because obviously it's quite private and it's got a lot of my day-to-day -day stuff in. So because I don't share this online, I don't filter it. And I think that's really important for my journaling. But if I do a little flip, you can see I put like tip-ins and decorate it and put washi tape and stickers and things in there and I'm really enjoying that and it is a daily one so it's because it's daily it kind of keeps me accountable so I bought some stickers and tape and things that I will use to decorate my journal so again I will link this small business down below I'm not sure how to pronounce it it's CIO Crafty they're based in Edinburgh and like I said I have shopped with them before and the owner's really nice they give you some little freebies so um, I'm going to go through all of these. I am trying to buy less art supplies this year and like be a bit more mindful about what I do buy. These look like some um, Lunar New Year. Um, they've actually got a yellow on the back so I wonder if they're sticky. But some little memo pad designs to write on. They're in quite a few different colours. And I find these really helpful especially in my A5 Hobonichi to fill the space because it was a little bit daunting at first um, with having gone from an A6 to an A5 
but it just means I can stick more stuff in and like I can put in postcards and bigger stickers and things like this so I think um, the A6 the A5 is definitely the way for me going forward so some cute little money meatball things here as well as this mini little sticker sheet with a little panda and a teacup, some little food items and I use stuff like this all the time to decorate my journal. I generally don't decorate it depending on what I've done that day, it's more just pretty things. So most of the things I bought was meatball because it's like a cartoon with like day to day um, designs and I just really love the way that it's styled so I think everything apart from this that I'm about to show you is meatball. But look how cute these are. <laughs> these are little pigs. Um, it's quite a big loop. You can see they're all like in little groups. So I thought this would be really nice to like border the bottom of my page. Um, very cute. I didn't actually know how big it would be. And I don't really think that the print quality is that great. But in my journal I think it will be fine. So I thought they were just really cute. And they did have some other ones, but obviously, like, the Shiba Inu ones were sold out because that's a very popular, like, motif. I am conscious that the this whole vlog is just going to be me opening um, my package, so I'll try and speed up. So, this one is the Meatball 2019 Summer. I think today's Ha Ha, it says. But this has got loads of different emotions on it, and so this is just one loop, um, which means it doesn't repeat. But the loops are really long, so basically, if you're new to stationery with the tape, you'll have a loop and then it repeats. So it'll be the same design and then that's one loop and then it repeats that design again and again on the roll. Um, and the meatball loops are really long, so you don't, like, it doesn't repeat that often. But I just thought these would be really cute again for if I do want to add, like, specific emotions onto my page if I'm having a good day or a bad day then these are just perfect for that. You do have to fussy cut them out individually. Um, but sometimes when I do that, if there's one that I want further down, then I'll cut out the first few ones and just stick them onto old sticker paper. So where I do my postage labels and I print those onto sticker paper, obviously stick that onto the package, I'm left with the backing. And that's perfect for sticker release paper and I'm recycling that and using it for my own stickers. So I can fussy cut this out, take it off the backing, put it on my own sticker release paper and have it for when I'm ready. So the next one I got was the Meatball 2018 Winter. This is in the cold colourway. So there was a warm one, but um, I just really like this one. And I'm not that fussed about getting like old styles. I know that they come out with new ones every year and there's obviously gonna be like 2023 ones. But for me, I'm not fussed because most of them doesn't have the year on anyway. So this, I thought, just a really nice decoration. It's more like collage style, this one, so there are less characters, but again, I just thought this would be really cute. And there's like little quotes and everything as well. So there will be, like, some of them might be quite fiddly to cut up, but I think that's just a really nice little activity to do when you're watching TV or YouTube or something, and you can just fussy cut away whilst you're watching something else. So this next one I got was also the Meatball 2018 Winter OOTD XL. So these are a lot larger than a lot of the Meatball characters, but I thought these were really nice. I really love decorating my pages with like little people in their um, outfits, and these are really lovely. I think that they're always designed with so much like thought, and like they're not done quickly. There's always a lot of detail included. And so I can obviously cut out this person and then the little flowers and decorate the page around it. So really excited to use those. I have got a lot of stickers, but like I say, I really love the meatball designs and I find them a really nice way to decorate the page. And then I did treat myself to a full roll of this meatball washi. So this is my first roll. I've generally only gone for loops before. So it's really chunky. Let's have a look. This is called Sweet Day by Meatball. I obviously I'm gonna have a lot of loops for this one, but I also want to give some away for like um, happy mail. When I send out packages and things, I thought that this would be a really nice way to give people loops. So let's see if I can get one off and start it. There we go. So you can see here how thick it is. It's, it is actually more cost effective to get a roll, obviously, but it's more outweigh in the first place. And of course, you are going to have 
the same things again but because the lips are so long I don't think that's an issue I mean look at that for the first one with that little artist so when I have a really good art day I can use that one these are just so cute um, these are more like day-to-day -day ones what was it called again sweet day so I think it's just day-to-day -day, um, little moments but like reading time obviously sitting in the bed waking up I just think this one will be really good and the reason I got this in a roll was because it is things I can use every single day whereas some of the more specialized ones like holiday themed ones obviously I'm not going on holiday so um, I think I'll get more use out of the day-to-day -day stuff but that's already been like 19 minutes of, of just showing you stuff so um, I don't know if I'll be able to edit any of that out but hopefully that was interesting and now I really need to get on with work I've got a client project which I want to send over the first proof this morning. So I've done the base. This is for a large card manufacturer and I kind of create like white label designs. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but basically my name isn't on it at all. Uh, it, they put their branding and stamp on it when it does eventually reach the shops. So I've got one of those to do today. I painted it yesterday. I just need to add on the details. And I add on the details on my iPad, so that is digital. A lot of the time they want things on layers so they can remove elements or they can move it around depending on their layout. So I literally just give them the artwork and then they'll add all the typography, like happy birthday to my sister or something on the top. But I don't get to see that part, I just give them the artwork. So it has to be as editable as possible, but because I do work traditionally, usually the base layer is just like the main design and then all the details I add on top. So that's my first task of the day, and then I will get onto the daily art. Lazy Sunday mornings, hiding under covers. I don't mind staying in with you. Play a favorite movie, laying right beside me. I don't mind when it's just us two. The corner coffee shop we like to go. Late night walks with you to take me home. With you, I never feel alone. Why am I like this? This is just from opening the packages. We are trying to be tidy this year, mostly because of the new office, so I'm going to put this all away instead of just piling it up somewhere. Put it away properly and then we will create some daily art. All that I need is your body next to me on rainy days. Just need your company, don't be too much, just your simple So I am back to doing a daily art challenge and I wanted to talk about it in this video. I've talked a lot about daily art challenges on my channel, obviously I did one from August 2021 to August 2022. So I did a year long daily art challenge which was six days a week and I've done a video all about that so I will link that up in the cards. But the long story short of it is it was definitely one of the best things that I've done, certainly for my art career and I was quite transparent about why I wanted to do that. So I obviously was a full-time illustrator at that point and I just found I wasn't prioritising creating, I wasn't doing as much art as I wanted to and that was one of the main reasons I wanted to do the daily art challenge for accountability and also to grow my audience and it definitely did that. I think I went from about two and a half thousand to almost 20k when I finished. So it definitely was good in terms of growing my reach but the best thing that came from that was gaining a community and I really feel like I found my people over on Instagram. I talk about that a lot as well because I know it does get a bad rap but it really helped me find my people and a lot of them are now on Patreon too and support me there. It just feels like a really tight-knit audience and I'm really grateful for the Daily Art Challenge for allowing me to find those people and find that experience for me. And so when the Daily Art Challenge ended last August, I was definitely looking forward to having a break. Obviously creating six days a week was a lot of pressure and I definitely found that for the first six months of the Daily Art Challenge it was harder than the last six months. And that was mostly because I 
hadn't connected to why I was doing it in terms of what I wanted from the art practice. I just felt like I had to create something every day. Whereas after sort of the Christmas point, I focused more on my inspiration and what I wanted to draw rather than what I felt like I should draw. So that definitely helped. And like I say, I do talk a lot about that and how to make it more manageable if you wanted to create your own daily art challenge. That's all in the video because I think it's important to make it work for you. So that's something that I was very aware of if I wanted to do another daily art challenge. But when I finished the one in August, I felt very burnt out. I was looking forward to having the break, but I thought that having a year worth of creating daily meant that it would be more habitual for me, and it just wasn't. I was burnt out by the end of it, so I didn't really want to create, and I found it very difficult to feel that spark again. And I just didn't create as much as I wanted to, even after having that year of habit. And for like the past six months, I have just been doing client work and things, and I didn't make time for art again. And so that's why I wanted to start a new one. I have a very busy year ahead of me, and one of the things I talked about in that video was making it work for you, and so I knew that a year-long daily art challenge would not be sustainable for me this year. So I've gone for 100 days, and my focus for these 100 days is to experiment and just play in my sketchbook. I obviously want to draw a lot more, that was one of the main focuses of me starting a daily art challenge again because like I said I wasn't prioritising it and I was just going through my day and not making time to create when you know this daily art challenge can just be 10 minutes in my sketchbook so I can easily fit that in because of my lifestyle and this being my full time job. And I'm really excited to focus on play in my sketchbook. I've been experimenting with pan pastels a lot lately and just really trying to find some sparks of inspiration when I create. And so that's what this challenge is going to be all about. And I'm just excited to really prioritise my creativity again. And it's not about audience growth this time. It's more about my growth as an artist and creating every day, trying new things and I'm really excited to see where it takes me. So that's a little bit about the daily art challenge. Um, if you want to follow me along on my art challenge, which is only five days a week this time, then you can do so over on my Instagram. So I hope you enjoyed watching this process and hearing more about my thoughts on daily art. But now we're going back to the vlog and I will talk about my thoughts and feelings on this piece. There always seems to be one leg of a tripod that seems a bit dodgy. Yeah. So the daily art is done, it always takes a lot longer when I film it, um, but I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out, it's really nice, um, it feels like my usual like comfort zone style, um, so I just did like a layer of gouache and then some near colours and mostly coloured pencils over the top. I was inspired by a previous piece that I did in my A4 sketchbook, so I did this last year I can't remember when, but it was definitely for that daily art challenge, so it was inspired by this one, but I wanted to do it smaller. So that's all ticked off now. I sent off the client work, so that's on proof now. The next thing I need to do is have some lunch. My stomach is rumbling a lot, so I definitely need to do that next. And then I'm going to edit. So it's going to be a computer heavy afternoon, but that's okay because I've had a creative morning, so I'm going to get some lunch and then I'll catch up with you later. So it's definitely getting to that point of the day where I am flagging. I always get like a mid-afternoon slump. I think I talk about that a lot in my videos, but it's 20 to 3 now. I've just finished editing the reel, so 
the main thing I needed to get done today is obviously the reel for today's daily art challenge. So I'm really happy that that's done. And actually I don't find reels take very long because I try and keep them quite short. Generally they're between 40 and 60 seconds. I do keep them very condensed because obviously if you want to see the full process then it's usually on YouTube. And I do often get asked how I edit my reels. I don't think I've talked about this before. So I use Premiere Pro, which is how I edit all of my videos. And I just have a preset ready for IG Reels. So I just have the like dimensions, then I edit it into, and then export it to some settings that I found when I was researching. And then I upload that to my Dropbox and then get it onto my phone from my Dropbox. And I just find that really easy. I find that the camera quality is better because obviously I'm using a DSLR to film my footage. And it does seem quite extra for reels, but the reason why I do that is because I can use the footage twice. So like I repurpose it, I use it for YouTube and I use it for reels. Obviously for YouTube it needs to be higher quality and it needs to be landscape in orientation. And I don't find a problem with cutting that into vertical for reels, but obviously I couldn't do that the opposite way around. So I always try and be aware when I'm setting up my camera angles and things of how it would work vertical because I know I want to make it into a reel, but I also need it to work obviously for YouTube. So I hope that makes sense, but if you do want me to go into more detail then just let me know. So that's done, I obviously haven't edited this vlog yet, but my main focus is to finish that Patreon video next. I also need to write the caption for Instagram because I tend to post around the same time each day, so about four o'clock. So I've got a little bit of time before then, but I'm kind of winding down in terms of like high energy work. I find video editing quite easy and I usually, depending on what I'm editing, I can watch a YouTube video as well. Although I won't actually be able to on this Patreon one because I need to listen and edit. But I do find it quite an easy task for me in the afternoon, which is when I do feel less energy. I did get some feedback from the client brief that I sent off, so I think I'll work on that tomorrow morning. Um, but I might do it this evening if I want to do a little bit of extra work. So although it is early afternoon, I am just going to be sat on the computer for the rest of the day, which I don't think is very good watching, but I think there's enough in this vlog to make it long enough. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my stationery and like my packages that came in, as well as the art process and me chatting about the new daily art challenge. I really appreciate you watching and being here. I'm really hoping to grow my YouTube this year and really add some strategy to it and try and create videos that I think are going to be really useful. So if you do have any suggestions or any comments at all, I always value them. So please do pop them down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you next Sunday with a new video. See you later. Should I have taken my dressing gown off for that? No, this is how I am 90% of the time. You must accept it. Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying